This is Twit. Okay. Roca Payne. Um, uh, we, I guess we should have expected this. And, of course, I'm put in mind of something that uh, – this is a phrase. I, I hope Bruce invented it. I love it. I, we, we credit him with it always, and, and he deserves it. Uh, this is Bruce Schneier, of course, uh, where he said, attacks only ever get better. They never get worse. And when I was writing this, I was thinking of Gibson's corollary, which is something I've to, I've told people over the years. If you're if the car you're driving ever starts making a different sound, it's probably not an improvement. That is, you know, cars don't get better; they they generally get worse, and so is the case for uh, attacks on crypto. So, three weeks ago. The 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 knowledge of this Roca attack went public, and what we know is that the researchers who forensically examined a, a whole bunch of public keys that were being generated by this Inf- Infineon crypto library discovered, to their credit, that these were not robust private keys; that it was possible to factor the private key, I'm, I'm sorry, these were not robust public keys, that it was possible to factor the public key down to its primes, which revealed the private key, which is exactly what this technology, the RSA technology was designed to prevent. So it turns out there are other skilled cryptographers on the planet. Their original disclosure three weeks ago estimated, as we discussed at the time, that it would cost an attacker who was renting time on a commercial cloud service an average of, for the smaller keys, the 1024-bit keys, $38 and 25 minutes. Much harder for a state-of-the-art 2048 bit key about nine days of of compute time costing about twenty thousand dollars so at the time we said okay that's really not good remember that it's supposed to be way 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 more than the age of the universe squared so this is far short nine days that's a lot quicker than the expected age of the universe. So um, we also know that many organizations who are known to be using these keys vulnerable to ROCA have largely downplayed the severity of the weakness, claiming that it was complicated and not inexpensive. And also even the guys in Estonia said that large-scale vote fraud is not conceivable due to the considerable cost and computing power necessary for generating the private key, you know, cracking the public key down back into its components again. But turns out, as I said, there are other gifted cryptographers, and particularly Dan Bernstein and the and the woman he often works with, Tanya Lang, um, they, they came up, with a much more potent attack. Dan, remember, is the originator of the, the curve 255.19, so definitely someone who knows his crypto. Um, they reported that they developed an attack that was 25% more efficient than the one created by the original Roca researchers. Okay. Then, um, um, and their new attack was solely the result of of Bernstein and Lang reading the original research paper, which at the time omitted specifics of the factorization attack in an attempt to increase the time that hackers would need to carry out real-world attacks. So they said, yes, we figured how to do this, but we're not going to tell you how. Well, you know, they didn't have to tell Bernstein and Lang how to do this. These guys figured it out 
themselves. So um, after creating their more efficient attack, Bernstein and Lang submitted it to the original researchers saying, uh, guys, uh, we got a better way to do this. The, and then upon receiving that, the original researchers since privately disclosed their own revised attack that's as much as four times more efficient than what they originally published in their paper. So that suddenly drops the 2048-bit key from nine days to what? Two and a half and from $20,000 to 5K, making, again, it, I mean, it was already within reach for anybody who cared to crack one. Now it's four times easier. And what this suggests is maybe we still haven't seen the result because the more you look at some of these problems, the, the easier it becomes to overcome them. So as a consequence of all this, on Friday, Estonia's police and border guard suspended the entire set. Oh, that's too bad. 760,000 ID cards. Can they fix it? Um, well, no. Because um, it's in now, a chip, right? It's kind of built in. in. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It is in the hardware embedded in the chip. So they are now issuing cards which use elliptic curve cryptography instead of the vulnerable RSA keys. Well, I'm glad I it didn't was, get my Estonian ID card. And and, and remember, that we've talked about how forward-looking oh, Estonia is. Oh, I was going to get is. one. I was in Estonia last year, and I meant to get one. I just didn't have time. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they use it for voting, for, um, for border crossing, for uh, as their ID card, for all kinds of things are tied into this. And they've had to say, whoops, we are just going to... Uh, Remove them all from service. Three quarters, more than three quarters of a million cards. And, but to their credit, they're going to reissue them using elliptic curve crypto, which isn't vulnerable to any sort of a factorization attack because it doesn't use prime factors as the as the hard problem that uh, needs to be solved in order to uh, to protect the key. So, yep, uh, we we could have anticipated that something like this would happen because. Uh, as Bruce said, attacks only ever get better. They never get worse. Um, and this podcast also only ever gets better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice coda for this show. It only ever gets better. <laughs>